So this is a function generator. It can generate AC signals. Let's turn it on here with this power switch. We're using a function generator probe, which you can follow here, which I have connected to the oscilloscope on channel one. See, the channel one is currently not showing anything because the function generator just turned on. So, on the left, you can see uh, channel one and the options and parameters that we have for it. Channel two as well. Uh, some different menu items that we can select from using the buttons and the uh, corresponding options here. Uh, a numpad for entering different values. Waveform, frequency, rate, amplitude, DC offset, utility are the main buttons that we are going to be selecting uh, for using this function generator. Purpose of a function generator is to output different types of functions or different types of waveforms at different uh, waveforms, different frequencies, different amplitudes, different offsets, and then we have uh, specialty functions uh, such as modulation, sweeping, and burst uh, triggering of different functions as well. On the right we have uh, two channels. And we need a function generator probe to output this channel itself. The function will be outputting always on the red clip and then the black goes to your reference or to your ground. I just have it cooked up here like this to demonstrate the cables, but you can also use a coaxial cable to connect channel 1 directly to the channel 1 input of the scope without needing the probes to do it. Let's first talk about um, each of the parameters of a function when you're generating a function. First, let's talk about waveform. If you press waveform, and you will see different wave uh, shapes and styles on the right. If I press sign, you can see channel one switch between the different shapes. Different shapes have different uh, subparameters, such as the duty cycle, uh, per percentage for the duty cycle. Uh, familiar with TTL at the moment. I'll go back to waveform, say pulse, do pulse width in terms of nanoseconds, microseconds, milliseconds, or seconds. Waveform again, you can do a ramp, or I uh, sometimes refer to this as a triangle or sawtooth function as well, where you can uh, change the symmetry of the function, either 50% or going down to 0%. You can see that the peak of the waveform turns into a descending sawtooth pattern, or maybe it'll go wrap around out of range. Or let's go up to a hundred percent and hit imagery, percentage. And you can see that it turns into a ramp waveform where it ascends continually. Let's go back to 50% and I can just push that in here and then press the value. And it goes back to a triangle wave. Talking a bit more about waveforms, sine wave here on the left, we'll have voltage on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. A square wave will look like this. A pulse width uh, waveform will look like this, usually used in uh, digital logic and digital circuits. And then you have triangle waves, uh, ramp or ramp or sawtooth waves on the bottom here. And as you, I just demonstrated, you can change parameters around to get different uh, wave shapes. So let's talk now about a type of function. Let's go to sine. And there's different things that you can do with uh, a function that you want to generate in terms of frequency and amplitude. So let's look at frequency for a second. Uh, hertz is the unit that we use to measure frequency. Frequency can be described as uh, a cycle per second, as you can see here, cycles per second. On the left I have a one hertz sine wave waveform, where it's one cycle of a complete sine wave in one second worth of time. If I had ten cycles of a sine wave in 
the same amount of time, this would be 10 cycles per one second, which would be 10 hertz. The period of a waveform is how much time it takes to complete one waveform. So for one hertz, uh, the time it takes to complete a single waveform would be one second. For something like 10 hertz, um, if you had 10 cycles, then they would be 0.1 seconds. As you can see here, one cycle takes 0.1 seconds to complete. So the period and frequency are inverses of each other. Frequency is equal to the one over the period, period is equal to one over F. We measure period using units of time for seconds. We measure frequency using uh, hertz. As you can see here, if you have one over one second, you get one hertz. Say this one cycle took 10 seconds, we would have 0.1 hertz, and so on. And so if one cycle took 0.001 seconds, then that would be equal to one over one millisecond, and then you'd have 1,000 hertz, or it'd be equal to one kilohertz. So if we have a function generator up here, uh, let's click frequency rate and then it asks us to input the frequency you want. You can see it's highlighted in red, and then on the bottom here, you have the value you want to input. So let's input um, 100 hertz. So you input 100, and then you can select which unit you want to uh, pick. So hit hertz, and then I turn the output on, and we have a source uh, load of 50 ohms, and then following up over here, we can see our function is here, but my time on the oscilloscope is a bit zoomed in. So let's zoom out in the time axis. There you go. You can see down here you have 100 hertz, and then a sine wave uh, appears right there for you. The function generator displays an amplitude of point, uh, 1 volt per peak to peak. 1 volt peak to peak. But as we can see on our waveform, uh, our volts per division is one volt. So we have one division up is uh, plus one volt, and one division down is minus one volt, which means a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of two volts. I think the terminology here, where it says amplitude of one, might be correct, but the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is currently outputting double what is displayed here which is a common problem with um, these machines in the lab, so you might want to look out for that. We can see that an amplitude here would be, if we ask for an amplitude of one volt, it, amplitude is defined as uh, the rise in the maximum voltage from the point of oscillation. So this is oscillating around uh, zero volts here. So if I ask for an amplitude of one, it'll go up one, to zero and then down one to zero. And so the amplitude is one, but the peak to peak voltage is going to be two volts. And as you can see here, V peak to peak, uh, V max would be the maximum voltage that it hits uh, across its oscillation. V RMS would be uh, the average delivered power of the uh, waveform. So we can see here a DC offset of zero volts means that it's just oscillating around this zero point. But if you offset the entire function by a certain amount, you shift this entire waveform up or down. And so that will be, if it's at like say a 0.5 volt DC offset, you will shift the entire function up by 0.5 volts. This is basically just adding a 0.5 to every single voltage point on the generator when it's generating this function. So, let's test out some different amplitudes. So let's, instead of 0.1, or instead of one volt, and then we have uh, amplitude, and then we get two volts peak to peak here, let's do half of that. So let's do 0 0.5 V peak to peak. All right, so you can see it changed units on us to uh, 0.5 volts is also equal to 500 millivolts. As you can see our waveform here, it looks about half as big as we had it before. Let's t zoom in on the uh, voltage. And 
A bit bigger. There you go. So her division here is 500 millivolts. So 500 millivolts up, 500 millivolts down. An amplitude of 500 millivolts, but a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of one volt. Let's just uh, check out the DC offset. So we're gonna press DC offset, and then we're going to go back over here and see that the offset is lit up. Let's type in a value of 0.5. Uh, volts, and then we're going to hit VDC, hit enter. So, I just asked to shift up the entire thing by 0.5 volts. And as we can see here, uh, I have set... Oh, I shifted it up one volt. I've asked for a 0.5 VDC. Uh, offset, which should shift the entire sine wave up by 0.5 volts. But, as we can see here, our offset is now around um, 1 volt that was offset up. And see the volts per division is 500 millivolts. So 1, 2 divisions up, it looks like it's oscillating around, which would be 1 volt uh, offset. So this is something to look uh, for whenever you're setting these things. Sometimes when you ask for an amplitude, it will output double what you input. Same goes for if you need an offset of a certain value, you might get double the offset on the output as well.